Hello, Jillian. How are you? Welcome to Jolly Talk Show. Uh, thank you for having me. Jillian, do you know what, what does Jolly mean? No. Jolly means fake uh, in English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So it's a fake talk show. Yeah, it's a fake talk show, but actually I came up with the acronym J-A-L-I, just a little interactive talk show. Okay. All right. So, Jillian, what are you doing these days? How are you? I'm, How is the quarantine I'm, treating you? I mean, I'm not really in quarantine anymore. Um, I was fortunate to have some remote work that I was able to do over the lockdown. Um, and then the rest of the time I was busy working out and working on like inner outer self work putting things together pieces in the place and all that kind of stuff so yeah i've been surviving pretty well i would say okay so jillian you have been living in pakistan for like two years now two and a half two and a half so how long have you been moving eight years and why did you decide that I didn't decide that. It just happened. <laughs> I mean, I, def I definitely didn't plan it. When I started out, um, I left, I went to Cambodia in July 2012, and I definitely had no idea what I was getting into. So like you went to Cambodia for like some work stuff or like you just wanted to visit Cambodia and you ended up there for li living there? Yeah, basically. Um, I had a friend from university who told me about it and she set me up with some workshops and I just kind of wanted to visit and I don't know, it seemed far and interesting and so I could go and teach workshops and I didn't have anything better. To, I just like gotten my bachelor's so I was like, I don't know, let's go explore. And then I went, I, I meant to be there for about six months and then it ended up being three years. <laughs> Children, you know, like you are lucky in that aspect because most of the people in Pakistan don't get to explore what they're passionate about. And I think you have given this thing your eight years, like you have been traveling and you have met a lot of people and you have involved yourself in different cultures. And I think that's pretty amazing. How was that feeling? I mean, they basically like, um, my, well, my passion is not traveling. Like my passion is my work, my artistic work. Um, and somehow okay. the following in the, of the artistic work is what leads me to these different places. Um, and because I am interested in working as an artist, almost always you can't do that as a tourist. And so you have to implicate yourself into the culture, you have to learn the language, you have to kind of be part of the local culture if you're going to participate in this art scene. And so that's kind of how it's happened. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, fascinating, challenging, wonderful, interesting, you know, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of adjectives. Yes, all of the adjectives, so, all of them. Uh, I, would, I would like to ask you that which form of art you would like to explore beside dancing? I mean, I guess I've I've dabbled a little bit in writing, um, a little Ooh. bit. Um, like I, I I I do write on the side fairly extensively. I guess that would probably be that's yeah. If I was not dancing, it'd probably be more into writing. Okay, so Jillian, dance form actually evolved with the fed passage of. So have you mastered or tried all of them or do you have a specific dance routine that you're good at? Um, uh, uh, well, I think it would be very difficult to master all of the dance styles. I mean, there, there are so many of them. I I'm mean, I, I'm, I'm, I wrote that question. There's so, I mean, there's so many and not just, I mean, even inside like contemporary dance, like I can say I'm trained in contemporary, which is true, but inside contemporary, there's, um, you know, all the different, you know, contemporary jazz and street, you know, contemporary, and there's Graham technique and Cunningham technique and Horton technique and Limon technique. And like the list goes on and on and on and on and on. So, you know, uh, I, 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 I am trained in ballet. 
Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's madness. Um, so like I have a lot of training in various contemporary forms and a lot of training in ballet. I don't know that I would say I'm a master in any of them, um, but I'm well trained in them. And then like in, as, as like routines, I mean, there's definitely solos that I've created that like I can pull out for a performance And they tomorrow. are beautiful. They are beautiful. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. the grace which you, with the grace that you move it, and the poise that you hold yourself up with, that's amazing. Because I, when I heard for the first time that there's a ballerina and she's going to perform at the Colony, mm-hmm. I was like, that's a hoax. Because we don't have <laughs> ballerinas in Pakistan. And then it was written Jillian Rewards. I thought maybe there's an artist who's just visiting for the time being and then she'll be gone. But after a month, there was another show and I was like, oh my God, is she staying here? I want to meet her. I want to know her because I heard a lot of good things about you. So how is how has basically Pakistan treated you? How has the artists treated you? Well, definitely a country and its artists are never quite the same thing. Um, you know, I mean, artists are artists, and and I think the art scene here has really welcomed me and just beautiful, you know. I I think I came to Pakistan at the right time, and that's the reason that I ended up staying, is because I I came here just at the moment when the performing arts industry was opening. Um, And because I have the training I have, and because I have the background I have, I was able to, like, get in and and have that impact of like maybe i can be here at the time when it's important to be here i can you know teach the classes do the performances when that when when that impact is going to be really strong and so and that's been really that's really interesting for me that's really exciting and honestly that's why i would actually love to be your apprentice i would actually (laughs) love to learn from you honestly like is that like is it possible for uh for us to join the class that you would be teaching? Um, I was teaching at the Colony for a little while um, and that was strictly ballet. Um, yeah, that's the point. Like, can boys do ballet? Yes, absolutely they can. Boys can and should do ballet. I mean, ballet is like, I mean, it gets a bad rap as being like sissy, but I mean, the amount of grace and strength and flexibility yes. that you need to have to be able to perform it well, like all you just, all you need to do is Google Barishnikov. And if you like watch Barishnikov dance and then you're still like ballet is for sissies, I don't know what else to tell you. Like the man is incredible, just absolutely incredible. For the first time, I saw a man doing ballet was in The Black Swan. Mm. And that was a great movie. Yes, it was terrifying, um, but it was good. Jillian, I was surprised to know that you have an interest in astronomy. Yes. So like, do you generally love science or is that just for astronomy? And if you're just interested in astronomy, then are you doing something in that field, particularly? Um. Yeah, it's interesting. I've been um, interested in astronomy almost as long as I've been dancing. So I remember when I was a kid, I used to write articles about the planets. Oh and yeah, and I, I almost, a nerd. <laughs> I am a nerd. And I, I almost, um, I almost um, double majored in university in dance and astrophysics, but then I didn't end up studying astrophysics, but I study dance instead. Um, and, and so just recently, this year, I've started to kind of combine my artistic work and my astronomy love. Um, so I've made like, I made a couple different pieces. One was all about the Trappist system. One was about the Drake. Uh, I saw one yesterday. Uh, was it the Explorer Ready or Not? Yeah. Yeah, that one was, I did that in collaboration with an astrophysicist um, who wrote, who just wrote a book called How to Die in Space. And he provided me the narrations for, um, for that piece, which was really fascinating. Yes. And I started, I started to host this like um, weekly show on Twitch for this organization called CosmoQuest, which is about the intersection of astronomy and art, basically. So all the different ways, you know, there's astro poetry. I didn't know there was astro poetry, but there's astro poetry. That's amazing. Even, I don't know if there's astro poetry. I'm surprised to know that there's astro poetry. 
Yes, there is. And there's, um, what else have I found? I've discovered so many interesting things. Around it. And there's people who are making art with radio telescopes. There are, um, uh, I, you know, the list goes on and on. I've just fallen down a rabbit hole researching um, solar eclipses in art history, which is fascinating. Um, and so anyway, like, it's just, um, mostly it's astronomy, but, you know, I, I don't know that I would say I'm like into science otherwise, but like, I love reading about science and astronomy and quantum mechanics and general relativity and all that stuff. I just love it. That's great. Just a second. Yeah, sorry. That's yes, okay. so Jillian, what has been, actually that is the question which I ask everyone in my show, that what has been the biggest struggle of your life? Yeah, I saw this question and I was trying to think about it. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's mostly just been to hold the path basically um you know everybody when they meet me or when they know about me I you know most people have their own opinions about who i am and who i should be and um whether that's you know how i express my gender or what kind of work i do or what kind of lifestyle i have or whatever it, it happens to be and um and i think especially throughout the travels that I've had in various Asian countries and to just hang on to the center and the essence of who I am and to know where I need to hang on and where I can let go. I think that's been the biggest struggle is to just understand what is the essence that I need to like fight for until the end and what yeah. I can compromise on and let go of. Yeah. Okay, so Jillian, what was that thing that kept you bright in the darkest of times? Um, that's, that's dance, always, you know, always, 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 always. Like it's, it's, that's, that's it. Like, I think sometimes, I mean, you know, it depends on the time and the day and all this kind of stuff, but you know, like basically that's when I'm moving or when I'm performing or when I'm dancing or whatever it is, like that's the only time when the world makes sense. As long as I'm moving, as long as I'm in the studio, as long as I'm on the stage, everything's fine. If I then like outside of that, it gets very confusing and weird and I don't know what to do. But as long as I'm there, then it's fine. Everything's good. That is the most honest answer an artist has ever given to me, I guess. <laughs> 